There was never really an easy quarter of engineering for me. However, there was one quarter that stood out as being more difficult than the rest. And that was my fourth and last year of college winter quarter, which was between January and March. Yes, the title says semesters, but technically I was on a quarter system. That quarter, I managed to take digital signal processing, advanced analog electronics, and wireless communications, which all had labs, plus a senior project class. I also had a job that I worked between 10 and 20 hours a week. And lastly, I did manage to spend a good amount of time hanging out with my girlfriend and going out with friends on various weekends. I don't remember exactly what I got, but after all of that, I did manage to get above a 3.5 GPA for that quarter. Okay, fine, that's not totally true. I mean, I was in engineering. I didn't have a girlfriend, but the rest was true, and I want to explain to you guys how I managed to pull that off. It definitely was not easy, and I'm not the type of person who can say, yeah, I didn't really study for the test, but got a 95%. I'm not someone who can really pull that off. I had to manage my time really well this quarter and work hard. These classes that I took were all electives, by the way. These specific ones were not required, and I chose them from a long list of electives that all electrical engineers got to choose from. So if you're thinking, why would you take all those advanced classes in one quarter? My only answer is because they interested me and because I'm weird like that. But the schedule was pretty hectic, especially with the labs. I remember there was one day where I had a class at 8 a.m., followed by a break, and then I'd go to lab from 12 to 3, followed by a 10-minute break to eat, and then I'd have lab from 3 to 6. And both of those labs always went the full three hours. And there were quite a few instances where I did not finish the lab in that three-hour time slot, so I had to complete it later on in the week on my own time. One of those labs was for digital signal processing, which I told you guys in a previous video always had like 20 page lab reports, which granted were lots of graphs and tables, but still a lot of work. The labs for this class were some of my favorites though. I got to make an equalizer that could amplify or reduce sound based on its frequency. I had to filter out a noisy signal to figure out what buttons were pressed on a certain dial pad based on the tones those all emit when pressed, and plenty more like that. In my advanced analog electronics class, I got to make something called a super heterodyne receiver, which is a type of radio receiver. And in my wireless communications class, I got to make another radio receiver, but this one was much different and used higher frequencies. Then we got to actually listen to the radio using it, which was really fun. And all the lecture classes taught the theory that went along with this stuff. So I think that's one reason I was able to get through this quarter. I had a lot of interest in my classes and had no problem putting in the effort to get through them. Going into the quarter, I knew it was going to be tough though. On day one, I remember when the first class ended at like 10 a.m., I went right to the library to do the homework assignment that was assigned, which wasn't even due until the next week. I read ahead a little and just did as much as I could because I knew there was no time to get behind. When I had a lab, I worked on the lab report for it later that day, even though it wasn't really due until the next week. I wouldn't do everything the day it was assigned, to be fair, but I at least started anything that I could. During the day, for the most part, if I had free time, I would use that to get work done, or I would do my actual job during that time. My job that I worked 10 to 20 hours a week on was being a grader for various professors. I graded homework, quizzes, and sometimes even exams in classes like calculus, physics, and electrical engineering. What was nice about that job was I could pretty much do it from anywhere. So I planned accordingly and brought my papers with me when I knew I'd have breaks during the day but couldn't go home. See, when it comes to your school, you can kind of divide it up into two categories for most of your classes. Work that needs your focus and attention where you're learning something new, like a new integration technique or how to set up a momentum problem. Then you have work that seems more like manual labor that requires less mental effort. This could be like copying a table from your notes to a lab report, or even some math problems like when you learned the quadratic formula and it was mostly plug and chug. Even grading papers was often like this for me. So if I only had an hour break between classes during this tough quarter, I would use it to do homework that required less mental effort. For example, I might just mindlessly type out as much of a lab report as possible during that time. But I would not want to start learning a new concept in that hour knowing that it would be interrupted by class starting soon. An hour I could save now by doing that busy work would mean an hour I'd have later to do the more challenging work. Then you know how once midterms come up, everyone is cramming to learn as much as they can in that last week? Well, I made sure that would not be me. In order to make that happen, I worked really hard on my homework when it was assigned to learn it in detail. I didn't just move on if I got a problem wrong, and I don't think I ever copied the homework from a friend, because I knew that would be a short-term solution to my stress while leading to problems down the road towards midterms and finals. If I didn't understand something, I kept at it, I went to office hours, I talked it over with a friend, and so on. But if I did need help to figure something out, I would then do another problem on my own to make sure I could get it without that person's help. I was not okay with just moving on because I think I got it, which it seems like a lot of people do. I had to make sure I really understood what was going on. To be fair, I still did some cramming for midterms, but it could have been way worse. Another piece of advice I want to give is don't skip class, especially on busy quarters or semesters like this one. For anyone in high school, this may not be something you're thinking about, but when you're in college and professors don't take attendance or simply don't care if you show up, it can be very tempting to just not go to class, especially for a morning class. 
but it doesn't take too long before you're very behind and get very stressed out. And you may be wondering how I even managed to go out and have fun during the weekends, and that's honestly because I had to. The week was really stressful, and even on Fridays, I had class, senior project meetings, lab makeups, and so on. So I really couldn't bring myself to do work on Friday at 10 p.m. However, I would get back to it on Saturday after I woke up, because I really hated that feeling of having a ton of homework to do on Sunday night. If I could go back, I may have replaced one of those engineering classes with a math or physics class, because I really did want to take more of those, and it would have meant one less lab. Also, I really didn't use a lot of the information that I learned in a few of those classes after they were done. But although it was a tough quarter, I wasn't pulling consistent all-nighters or anything like that, and I did learn a lot of interesting things in a wide variety of electrical engineering subfields. And before I end this video, as many of you know, I recently released Major Prep merch, and if any of you are interested, everything in the store is 15% off for the rest of this month as a thank you for ordering early and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as a YouTuber, I think I'm supposed to tell you guys to hit that bell like 80 times to get notifications. Follow me on Twitter and join the Major Prep Facebook group for updates on everything. And I'll see you all in the next video.